Hall, DV Asia. How are you guys doing? So I'm here at NAB 2013, and uh, we're really excited to showcase a lot of new features inside of the Adobe Video Tools. Uh, I've got new things to show you inside of After Effects, Premiere Pro, Audition, Speed Grade, and some brand new workflows that allow us to work between these different applications. So really excited about this new release coming. So here I am inside of Adobe After Effects, and uh, one of the things After Effects is used for quite a bit is rotoscoping. And we've had this great feature for a while called the Roto Brush. And with the Roto Brush, I can use very simple paint strokes to start to actually uh, pick out the area of a shot that I want to keep. And uh, I can use red strokes to remove areas that I don't want to keep. Now with this particular image, we have a real challenge here, and that is, I want to try and keep these two people plus this tree line in the background and you can see there's a lot of fine detail in the trees. So even as I paint across this, you know, being able to use the roto brush and have it automatically get a lot of detail in the tree line is a very difficult thing to have happen. So what we've done in this new version of Adobe After Effects is we've added a new companion tool and I'll just quickly go through here and just uh, clean this up just a bit. I can come up here and I go to the roto brush, and inside the roto brush, we now have something new called Refine Edge. And when you see this, it really is almost like magic. Because what this does, I can paint across the area that I want After Effects to really look for fine detail. And when I let go, this actually creates a uh, what we call an X-ray view where we can now see that fine detail. So I'll go ahead and continue this up to here. I'll go ahead and do it around over here. And we'll go ahead and get this gentleman's head in the shot. And you can see it's actually picked up the detail in that tree line. Now if I start to step forward with this, you'll see that it actually follows and tracks the shot and it's even looking and it's extending out the edge of the x-ray view here. So if I want to, I can just uh, add a little bit more there. But it will actually automatically do this for me. So it's now picking up all of that detail in the shot automatically. So if I want to replace this background with something different, I'll just switch over to my composition view and you can start to see in areas like here, whoops, Areas like here, you can see just how much detail it's actually picking up of the tree line. I could continue to clean this up a little bit more and add more of the, uh, this gentleman's head is kind of semi-transparent here. So I would just continue to paint across this and maybe use a little bit of the uh, roto brush to help clean this out. But you can see just how quick this can now create a really nice refined edge now, this feature is also found as a separate independent feature, so this can be used not only in conjunction with the roto brush, it can also be used in conjunction with chroma key footage or footage that's been keyed or uh, has an alpha channel from other sources. So there is a separate refined edge that can be used and applied no matter how the transparency has been created. So we think this is a very, very powerful feature moving forward. People are going to be able to rotoscope things that would just be impossible otherwise. Another great new feature inside of After Effects is a new integration with Cinema 4D. We have actually partnered with Cinema 4D in order to enable workflows that were never available before. Many times if we wanted to integrate a, a 3D object into an After Effects composition, it would have to be rendered as a series of transparent images and you really didn't have a lot of extra information as far as lights or camera or anything else. Now, in uh, this new version of After Effects, I can actually load up and have C4D objects brought in directly into After Effects. And not only that, if I select the C4D layer and I come in and choose Edit Original, this will actually launch a light version of Cinema 4D, which will be included with every copy of After Effects. 
So now people who want to start to uh, composite using 3D objects and mix those into real footage, you can take advantage of all the tracking function, you can take advantage of uh, all the tools inside of Cinema 4D and have a wonderful robust workflow. This even allows for uh, taking cameras from Cinema 4D, importing the camera into After Effects, taking lights from Cinema 4D, importing the lights into my scene in After Effects so that we can match objects into a scene properly. So very, very powerful workflow. And if I start to play around with this, if I were to select part of this, change a color, make a uh, save for some of this, it will actually update over inside of After Effects. So it is a uh, somewhat live link. I save in Cinema 4D and I will see the change happen over in After Effects immediately without having to go through and do render passes and have breakouts with uh, specularity passes and other types of components. So really excited to have Cinema 4D in basically with every single shipping copy of After Effects moving forward. Very, very exciting time. Lots of new features inside of this version of Premiere Pro. Uh, we have gone back through and looked at the timeline and tried to make the timeline a lot more visual for editors. In some cases, this meant going back and looking at features that we were missing that people expected to see from other applications. So we have new features as I uh, move into my timeline. I can zoom in here on different layers. I can go through and do things like show duplicate frame markers so I can tell that there's multiple copies of a clip in the timeline and select that and delete it so that I'm not duplicating my frames. I can go through and use things like uh, through edit indicators and uh, this is an example here where we have a clip that's been split and there's no reason for that edit to be made. So now I have the ability of selecting the edit point and joining that back together again. These are just some of these small features inside the timeline that we've made a lot of improvements to. We also have this ability to actually change how the track headers are being viewed. We can go in and actually customize the audio or the video header tracks. So in this example here, I've actually added a audio track meter. So when I play back audio on this timeline, I can actually see the audio playback on a track by track basis. I can actually uh, check that out and see which audio is peaking and I can see that on a track by track basis. Many new changes to our audio. We now have something called an audio clip mixer. So for people looking for audio automation, this is a brand new panel inside of Premiere Pro so that we can actually generate keyframes automatically on a clip by clip basis. And we still have the way of doing uh, track based automation is also still built into Premiere Pro. So we give you your choice of workflows. The biggest new feature inside of this version of Premiere, though, is the new uh, integration with SpeedGrade. What we're seeing in the industry right now is a lot of people are doing grading at the same time they're doing editorial work. So what we've done is we've made Premiere Pro work with LUT files, and with speedgrade.look files. So what this means is a colorist can come up with a particular look for the video, and we now have this folder of effects called Lumetri Looks. By opening this up, you'll see these are all the preset looks that ship with Speedgrade, but we can use this same effect with a, a LUT that I generate or that my colorist generates, and I can put these onto individual clips, or I can put them onto adjustment layers so that I can actually see how clips are affected by this particular look. So if I come in and I actually take, uh, I'll take one of my cinematic effects here, you can see here's a list of these different, I get nice little thumbnails of each of these different looks. And I'll go ahead and use sepia since it's a nice uh, visual indicator here. Drag and drop it into an adjustment layer and instantly my whole timeline is now set up to be taking advantage of this look and I can now play this back and I have that uh, looking at my video. So in a lot of cases with newer digital cameras, they shoot in a uh, log format. Log formats don't look nice by themselves. They have a lot of color information for adjusting later. But many times a producer will look and think that the video is broken somehow. So now in editorial, it's very easy to just add a, uh, an adjustment layer 
throw a, uh, a look on that and they'll be able to see an idea of what the video will look like when it's finished and it will not affect the editing process or have to generate any new media. Very, very powerful integration feature. It is actually the engine from SpeedGrade. The Lumetri engine, color engine, is actually built directly inside of Premiere Pro now. So we have this wonderful integration back and forth between the two. The SpeedGrade team has been hard at work working on uh, revising the user interface of Adobe SpeedGrade to make it easier to understand for Premiere Pro and After Effects artists. Um, this new workflow involves uh, having tabs in the upper corner so that I can very quickly step between working with media, going into coloring, rendering, and then looking at the results of my render. So it's a much easier workflow and it's really nice and visual. So if I come in here and I'll just uh, bring up a uh, project that I'm working on, I'll go ahead and load these clips. It automatically finds and relinks the media for me automatically. I can now switch to the color mode and you can see the interface has been vastly improved. This is also designed to automatically scale different items. I can see my timeline. I can see each of the different pieces of media. And the great thing about SpeedGrade, SpeedGrade is designed to run with a single graphics card in even a laptop computer. So it's a fantastic tool for doing grading work on set or on location. So you can see I'm playing back my media here. This is 1080p media playing back in SpeedGrade. If I switch to my look view, you'll see that again, the user interface has been uh, vastly revamped to make things much easier to find. Masks are available over on the side here. My overall color grading is available here. I can uh, look at my uh, different preset looks if I want to, or I can completely hide that in the interface. I also have new tools dealing with uh, analysis. So these are the uh, analysis tools, and you'll see how nicely the uh, interface, as I bring up my scopes and monitors, I can easily see what's going on, and I don't have to go through um, and kind of move things around to make that happen. We've added a new interface, um, which includes a Luma waveform. A lot of people were asking for a, we had a color waveform before, we we're asking for a pure Luma waveform. That's a new analysis tool built inside of SpeedGrade. But the beauty of SpeedGrade is just the ease of use. I can very, very quickly start to build a particular look with my video. I can uh, add a bit of color here. I'm doing something kind of dramatic um, just to show for the camera here. Um, so you can see that uh, I'm using the, uh, lift, the offset gamma gain controls here to start to generate a look. But I can also come in and do things like I'll add an additional layer. And with this layer, I'm gonna go to my mask and I'll just click on a preset mask here, and using this little widget, I can very quickly kind of build out the feather a little bit. We'll slide this out a bit, slide this out a bit. And what I'm doing is creating a vignette layer. So now with this mask, with this layer selected, I can go ahead and click on the name of this, and we'll go ahead and call this vignette. And I can come in here and just play with the, uh, the overall gain of the image. But when I turn on the mask and I say I want to see this on the inside or the outside of the mask, I've now added a nice vignette effect and I can tweak and dial that uh, in even further. So if I make this really, really dark, I still have the ability to kind of adjust this layer here using this layer slider. I can actually make changes uh, over here inside of this panel here. Now, these, all of these different layers form one look file. So when I click on save, this will save a dot look file with all of the different layers, including the mask, including the, uh, the vignette, including the overall color grade, secondaries would be included with this, special effects would be included with this, and uh, that file can then be dragged and dropped onto clips or adjustment layers in Premiere. So really, really powerful tool for generating and creating a particular look for the video, and then allow the editor to apply it wherever they need it. So we're pretty excited about this new version of Audition. Uh, for the first time now, Audition is a 64-bit application on both Windows and Mac. Um, it has a number of new features that are built in, including some old favorite features that we haven't seen in a while, like pitch bending, are now included inside of this new version of Audition. Some of the nice features that I like, there's a lot of nice uh, changes that have been made to the way the user interface works. Um, we now have the ability to color code 
different tracks, and we can even color code clips within each of the different tracks. We also have a uh, brand new option for working with and removing sounds from objects. So this is an example here of a siren that's actually an unwanted siren during an interview segment. Using a paint tool function inside of Audition, we can actually come in and mark the uh, particular sound that we want to go through and remove. So I'll go ahead and use this sound remover. This will walk me through the process so I can go through and actually paint the particular part of the audio that I want to get rid of. So using a paintbrush, I can tell this new sound remover that this is the, uh, the sound that I want to remove here. So I can actually paint across that particular sound. I can add additional pieces to this. Oops. I'll paint here. There we go. I'll paint across here. And what I'm doing right now is I'm telling Audition the sound model of what I want to remove from the audio. So we're going ahead and just taking a little section here, a little section here, and it's going to pick up that sound. So once I've done this, I can go ahead and click the Learn Sound Model, and it will analyze that information, and it can start to actually remove that particular sound based on a paintbrush over a long period of time. So we see a use for this in cases where we have cell phones that ring, we have unwanted noises during an interview. Um, it's a great tool for being able to clean out a very specific unwanted background noise um, directly out of the timeline sequence by listening to specific frequencies that we tell Audition using a paintbrush. So very, very powerful new feature. You'll notice here we now have a two-up display view so what this means is I can play back and listen to the original audio, or I can listen to the adjusted audio across the length of the clip um, using this different two-up display view, and I can see any changes that I might be applying. I can see two separate waveforms of the same audio before and after. So again, very, very powerful tool. Um, you can see some of the adjustments here. I can say uh, enhance this for speech. We'll go ahead and choose uh, apply. And if I deselect this, it's actually going through on a frequency basis. I'll go ahead and just bring that back here. I'll say select all. And then I can apply this even across longer periods of time. And this has actually gone through now using the sound model that I painted, it has removed the sounds from the spoken dialogue at the end of this clip. I now have clean dialogue and the, sound, the siren in the background is now gone. So those are just a couple of the new features in this next generation release. We're very excited about it.